Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It is Monday, November 6th. Did you change your clocks? Did that freak you out? Oh, well, come on. I, I, I don't even get excited about this anymore. An hour here, an hour there. A woman in her late 50s does not sleep that much, so don't worry. We are not really checking that. But I hope you enjoyed your extra hour, and I hope that you had a good weekend. Most importantly, I hope that you have been listening to us throughout as we start talking about the end of the year. I can't believe it. This is where we are, gang, these last two months. This is where you can make some changes in your life. You can start thinking about the future. I don't even want to wait till we do financial resolutions in January. I want to do it right now. If you have a question, get in touch with us. JillOnMoney.com is our website. Click the Contact Us button. Do let us know if you would be willing to come on the air live. That is so much fun when you do that. Also, while you're on the website, subscribe to the Jill on Money live service because our upcoming webinar, you get four webinars for the next year for 35 bucks. The upcoming webinar is about year end financial and tax planning with a certified financial planner that I actually trained myself. His name is Dan Forbes. I love this guy, New England based. And by the way, Mark, I hate to tell you this. He's a huge New England sports fan. We're not going to talk sports with him, but he is fantastic at what he does, and he's going to help guide us through the year end. So you can only do this if you subscribe to Jill on Money Live. Again, 35 bucks, webinars, bonus content, all for you. All right, today, let's get going here. We've got Michelle, who's on the line from upstate New York. And Michelle, I understand that Mark kind of blew you off. You you wrote emails. He ignored you. Is that what happened? <laughs> Uh, I'd like to think maybe they went to the junk folder by accident or something, because I know Mark wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do it on purpose, but he is inundated by emails that I don't even look at anymore. So I used to go and look at our inbox, and then it made me so tense that I decided, forget it. I'm not doing this. How can we help you, Michelle? Yeah. Hi. I had kind of a question around the way that I'm saving for retirement. Um, okay. I think I'm doing a pretty good job, but I'm wondering if I would benefit from from changing where I'm putting the funds that I'm saving for myself mm-hmm. and my husband. Okay. Um, so currently, I'm I'm in my early 50s, I'll say, and I have about $1 million, a little over a million dollars in my 401k with my company that I've been with for my whole career. But it's almost all pre-tax. I just started doing Roth in the last year or so. I max out, including the catch-up, um, every year now. And I put 50% into traditional and 50% into Roth only for cash flow purposes. I just can't okay. can't quite do all Roth right now. Michelle, how much do you earn? About 200000 Wow. That's a big number. Good for you. You said you're married. So how much does your husband earn? About sixty. And is he also contributing to a retirement account? He is, but he's a teacher, so he'll get a pension, which I know you love, and I do too. Um. <laughs> I love you, honey, mostly for your pension, but also for being a great partner. Yeah. So first, let me just ask you, does he have money in a 403B? He does. He's got about 180K. How old is he? He's 54. And how much longer will he be working Ideally, he's only working one more year. He's going to retire right at 55, but he has a couple of side jobs that he'll keep doing. So I, I, I think his income will stay probably about the same. What's the pension amount? Because it's like he's got 55 and 30 years in. He's part of the New York State pension system. Yep, he is. But unfortunately, because of a, a divorce a few years ago, we're, this is our second marriage. He's going to, for the first couple of years, have to share that pension. So let, I'm only counting on like 2500 a month. For the first few years, and then when does it turn back into 100% his? I think about three years into retirement. At 58, it's 5000 a month. That's my guess, okay. yeah. Okay, good. How long do you want to keep working? I want to work uh, at least to 62 or 63. I can't even imagine not working right now for quite a while. Mm-hmm. You know, Mark says to me the other day, I said, you know, something good was happening. And I said, oh, that'll be good. It'll make me, allow me to stop working. He said to me, literally, he said, you would know what to do with yourself if you stopped working. And uh, um, by the way, I think I would know exactly what to do with myself. (laughs) Now I'm starting to feel like, yeah, I got a lot of things to do, but you know, I'm not retiring. So Michelle, uh, you have kids? Yes, I have two. Two kids. Are they grown? Are they, where are they? Yeah, they're they're both out of the house. I'll, I'd say uh, the girl is fully launched and the boy is not quite fully launched. How much do you have to do you have to spend money out of your cash flow for your son or not? 
Yeah, I'd say probably between 500 and 1,000 a month right now. He's got a health issue he's going through too, so I'm, oh. I'm cutting him All some right. slack there. Yeah. All right, I'll get, we'll cut him some slack till that's over with. Now, besides the million dollars in your 401k, the 180 in your husband's 403b, what other money have you saved up? I have a brokerage account. It's only got about 55K right now. And that's kind of one big part of my question. Do you want me to just get right into that now? Do it. Okay. Rock and roll. All right. So part of me is thinking, you know, I have all of this pre-tax money and, you know, roughly, you know, I'm an engineer by trade. Roughly, I know in like seven to 10 years, that should double if you consider the market will perform as it usually does. So I'm going to have a lot of money in pre-tax. I'm wondering if it would be better for me to start doing something where I just do Roth 401k up to my 6% match that I get with my employer and then start kind of cramming the rest of it into the brokerage account to build that up. I know I've got a ways before I want to retire, but I was just wondering if you thought that would be a better strategy and also whether you think I'm kind of on track for retirement in eight to 10 years. How, How much money do you guys need Again, let's be sober in our in our estimate. So, you know, right now, let's presume that you keep helping out your son for a little bit, maybe not a thousand a month, five hundred. But how much money do you think you need to live on? What are your real expenses? Um, we spend about ten thousand a month. You know, that's not we don't need to spend ten thousand a month, but that's kind of what we like for our lifestyle. Who is that in the background? I love that. <sighs> we ha- I have two fur babies, and I have my office door closed, but. I should send you their pictures because we have two golden retrievers and they're pretty awesome. Oh my gosh. You got to let them in. Let's be clear though, that if I look at your future social security benefit, right? If I look at yours and your husband, is your, will your husband, he'll get social security, right? Yeah, he will. Okay. But if I look at yours, like at your, let's say age 67, let's just do your first, like what would your 67 social security benefit be? Last time I looked it up, it was around 3500 a month. Okay. So then let's look at this like very um, wide-eyed here. At your age 67, you guys are about the same age, right? You, We have not just the pension, but we have two social security checks. So, you know, when you look at it, you have almost 10 grand a month coming in at age 67. And I know it's taxable, Right. You're an engineer. You know these numbers. They look good. You're on track. You're great, right? The only thing we need to really consider, I think what you're asking is, should you be more focused on maximizing the taxation of all of these assets? I think that's what you're asking. Because obviously, right now, you will be, your top bracket will be 24%. And you live in New York State, so you're in a high-tax state. The question that maybe is relevant here for everybody is that if you are on track and everything is going well, what is it that we need to really, what's our, what's the big um, unknown that we have to think about, right? So the big unknown for you is where do tax rates go? Because, you know, if tax rates go up substantially, you'll be like, darn it, I wish I had actually put all of my money into Roth, but you know, we don't know yet. But you're going to be still in a pretty, you're going to at least be in the 22% when you retire as your top bracket, at least, right? When you get to age 67. So it seems to me that you got this really interesting five-year period between age 62 and age 67, where the only income that you will have is the at that time, the pension, which is the five grand a month, right? And whatever side hustle income you and your husband decide you want to come up with. That may be a time where you start pulling money out of the pre-tax 401k to live on. Maybe just live on that. And that, and then you don't, you're not worrying about converting or anything. You're just going to, you'll pull out whatever it is. Let's say it's 50 grand a year, 60 grand a year from your pre-tax assets. And you use that to finance you from 62 to 67. I kind of like that idea. I mean, it may be worth it to do that until you're age 70 and let your social security benefit accrue and get that extra 8% compounded. You know, I don't know if you have to put way more money into your pre-tax. I'm fine if you said to me what I'd really like to do, Jill, is, you know, kind of pull back and put some more money in the Roth. Maybe go just go, you know, maybe instead of maxing out, you know, you cut that in half, just do all Roth. It'll be a tax hit. You'll absorb it. 
and then add whatever money you can to the brokerage account just to give you some liquidity. But do know that your liquidity problem is solved in five years because you will be able to tap into these assets easily. And especially if you're willing to work, it doesn't seem like you have to make a huge change. Oh, you know, I didn't ask you. So tell me about the housing situation. You guys own a home? Yeah, we own a home. How much is it worth? It's worth about four fifty, and we have two hundred and thirty k left on it. The mortgage is three point four percent. And you're going to stay in that? Yeah, we like house. It. Okay, no rental property. No what? No, no anything else? Right? No, no. Okay. I mean, I think you guys are in amazing shape. I really do. You don't have to con- contribute only to the match in your four hundred one k, but maybe I would say like ten percent you know, into the Roth and then put the rest in the brokerage, whatever it is that feels comfortable for you. I mean, it might be too much of a, I don't want to go too crazy. You just have to get used to what it feels like in the cash flow when you're not doing the pre-tax. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I like the idea of building up the brokerage, but don't fret too much because again, if you're going to work to your 62 or 63, you keep building up, you will be able to pull money out of that traditional pre-tax retirement account, both you and your husband, that both of you have, you'll pull it out to the extent that you want to fund your cash flow. And that seems to me a great idea because by the way, when you get to 67 or 70, you'd be golden. Okay. That makes me feel really so much better. Yeah. I mean, you, you're golden. Okay. So um, just a last bits, estate planning done? No. I am going to sign up for our legal plan at work with our benefits enrollment. So that we'll take care of that early early in 24. Fantastic. That's a great benefit that we have. Absolutely. So I'm going to encourage you to do that. By the way, uh, because you already outed yourself as an engineer, I want to tell you that you don't need a fancy calculator to know the following. There is a 100% probability that you will die. Oh, that's so depressing, Jill. (laughs) (laughs) It just means you sign up for that benefit and get that estate planning done. All right. That's it. You're done. You're in great shape. So keep doing what you're doing. I like the idea of kind of moving to the Roth, build up that brokerage account, but be clear that the most important thing that you can do is to keep working. And then when you stop working, start slowly pulling money out of those pre-tax accounts to fund your cash flow. That's how you're going to limit what the actual impact of those required minimum distributions are. And by the way, RMDs are only going to start for you at 75. You have time to kind of whittle this down, which is a great thing. You're done. We're done with you. We are done with Michelle. And um, we so thank you for joining us. If you would like to talk to us about a Roth versus traditional, if you would like to talk to us about strategies, about retirement, if you want to talk to us about education, funding, changing jobs, anything that's going on in your life, get in touch with us. Go to JillOnMoney.com. Click the contact us button and be persistent. If you don't hear back from Mark, say, hey, I didn't hear from you. But if you sent it twice and we didn't get it, that's probably, you know, maybe something weird happened. But get his attention. He is easily nudged. Don't forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter. comes out every single Friday. And you can subscribe to the Jill on Money Show on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. All right. Leave us a rating and review. And don't forget to lift someone up. Change your work. Change your wealth. Change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 